Hi everyone, I'm Justin Hattendorf and I'm the product design manager at Entopology. And today I'm gonna to show you an example of how to apply textures to your parts with fields without ever having to use bitmaps. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is import this mesh. So I have this water bottle that I want to, let's say, apply texture to the handle here. So first thing you're gonna do is convert this to implicit. So you'll see I have the implicit form here. So the benefit of this is that everything is has a field. So you can see here with the field viewer, um, let me turn these in contours on. So you can see every see 10 millimeters, you can see there's a line here. So you can see field radiating off of this shape. Um, now that this is turned into a field, the next thing you're gonna do is offset. So you'll want to do this for every texturing application you're doing with the procedural methods. So um, basically what this means is that um, I'm taking my input implicit and I'm gonna offset that by, let's do one millimeter. So if I choose one or two or any value for that matter, you can see it's switching to an even offset all the way through. Um, but to get to, to apply the texture, use ex the same exact technique, except instead of a multiplying or offsetting by a value, you offset by a field. So I'm gonna use the cellular noise block as an example. So if I switch the field viewer to this, you can see I have a texture here that it's a bunch of cells in space and you can change the size um, with the frequency. Um, and you have a couple other parameters here that you can adjust as well. Um, so to actually apply this texture that you see in the field viewer to the um, implicit, you have to drag it into the offset block. So you can see here, I drag it in and it doesn't work right away. Um, and that's just because if you turn on the probe in the field viewer, you'll see these are just numbers in space. They're not dimensionalized or anything. So we want this to be um, in millimeters so that we know instead of 0.6, it's 0.6 millimeters offset away. So drag this back out. And actually to add units to this, just multiply by one milliliter. So now if I switch the field viewer to this, it'll look identical here, but you can see there's a millimeter attached to the probe here. So I'll turn my back off again now that I know it's working. Um, drag this in, and you can see that this texture has been applied everywhere here. It's a pretty small section in the turns up to five, just so you can see it. Um, so you can see it this cellular texture has been applied here and it's going up and down on the surface, five millimeters. Um, but you can see it's a little out of control. The um, texture goes all the way around the bottom and the top and kind of runs into that lid. So what we're gonna do then is use a ramp block um, to get that back under control again. So I'll take this back out and I think I've already organized this ramp block here. So um, basically I'm gonna use the same exact technique like with a multiply block, but instead of multiplying by one, or five, I'm gonna add one again and multiply this entire field by this entire ramp. So nothing happens right away because you can see, but if you turn on the field viewer, you can see that inside of this box, there's texture and outside of it, there's not. So this box I've already organized a bit. So you can see, um, anywhere inside of this box on the bottle, there'll be texture and anywhere outside there won't be. So I'll make sure that the top and bottom of this bottle don't get any texture. So all I have to do is drag this in and you'll see here, this, this texture has been applied um, and you're not running into anything on the edges. So um, actually I'm gonna turn this back up again to five just so you can see what's happening. Zero. Um, so you can see here, yeah, we have texture inside of the, where that box was, but not toward the lid. So, and this is pretty much the, the only structure you need for this file to work. And then you can start getting more creative with which textures. Um, um, so you can use, like built into on top, I've just used cellular noise because it's pretty straightforward to get going. Um, but you could use all sorts of other algorithms instead. So. I'll switch this to simplex noise as well, which is another really easy block to use. You just change the frequency 
And the random seeds, you can change how random it is. Um, drag this in. And then you should see your texture update. Not the best looking texture, but you can see it ran super quickly. Um, I didn't have to import any bitmaps. And then I can convert this super easily to a mesh or slice it or anything. This is actual geometry, not um, any images. So, so yeah, that's, those are the basic ones. Um, but I actually prepared a couple other ones that'll be a little bit more interesting. So I, I made a few custom blocks here. I have faux marble, faux wood, and faux leather, um, all with quite a lot of parameters. I built these up in a separate file. So you can see that the, I'll start with the leather one. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so you can see here, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see it's a really similar type of noise texture, um, but it's a lot more organic. So I'll show you really quickly how I built this one up in a separate file before I applied this to the bottle. So the way that this is actually done is super, super interesting and actually pretty easy to do, although it looks complex. So um, it's actually based on the same principles as the original cellular noise that I was doing in the other file. So you can see here, it's just a cellular noise, nothing special. Um, but by using the remap block, you can start to layer in different densities. So I've used the remap block um, with another cellular noise at a different scale. So I can change this to like 40. You can see there's one cellular noise here, and it's being in this one is remapping to it, which becomes this. So you can see the little clusters at the corners here. So it's not super crazy, just a little bit, a little bit more organic, just by having the texture compress a little bit. Um, and basically, you can do that several times at several different scales. So first one is a very large scale. The next one was a little bit smaller scale. So you can see by applying another remap, I can make the texture warp pretty quickly. Um, and the texture generates super fast. Um, it's pretty much instantaneous as soon as you run the block. So once I have this warp, basically I do the same thing again. I could remap it with, I think it's a simplex noise here too. So by remapping it to the simplex noise at a smaller scale, what you can get is start to see these like kind of rougher textures in between. So this is going to make the texture, instead of being like super straight edged and like engineered, you can start to get more organic te feeling textures just by adding a little bit more noise. So yeah, so so far I've only used the cellular map or the sorry, the cellular noise, the simplex noise, and some remaps. And they're combining them in a few different ways. You can already make this super engineered texture look very organic. Um, so the next step, I applied a clamp just so you can basically invert that texture a little bit and focus directly on the edges here, or on the creases here. So what it's doing is it's just shifting the field so that the toward the inner in, inner cells it becomes more flat and it's only really being affected at the edges. So I'll do that and then I'll apply one more step of applying another. No, so uh, simplex noise to this. So by applying another simplex noise, I have like a roughness field, and I can add the roughness field and the cell rate ratio together. And you can see, I'll switch this to turbo. You can see I have a color map with roughness, creases, cells. It's a little bit more organic at the at where each cell meets. Um, and I really haven't done anything too special. I've just combined different noises at different scales. So you can do this with all sorts of patterns. Um, I just chose leather. This is a pretty good example for making it feel organic. Um, but I also put together a couple examples that use the same principle, um, but just a totally different texture. So I have an example of a marble texture here. You can see it has like different patchiness to it uh, that the leather didn't have, um, and a wood texture here. All of these use the same exact principle of just combining noise in different ways. Um, so what I've gone and done is 
for my bottle file, um, I decided to, instead of just showing the textures set in separate files, I decided to import them as custom blocks. So if I use my same exact file before as it were with my water bottle and swap out, let's say, the leather. You can see here that actually, whoops, I think I have a unit error here. Yep, invalid units. So, so basically, this faux leather should just be dropped right in here. Yep. So you'll see it'll run. And now with the with the resolution here, it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, do Control H to high do a high res render, and you can see here that this texture has been applied all the way across. So you can see it's starting to wrap around the edges. Um, like this, is, this isn't a straight surface or anything. It's like wrapping in three dimensions all the way around this object. And that's because the noise doesn't have a particular direction. It can be in any direction you want it to go in. So actually, I'm going to tune down this ramp just a little bit um, and zoom in so you can see that a little bit closer. So you can see how that texture is wrapping. Control H. Let's try that again. Oh, there it goes. Easy. There we go. You can see it's actually super high definition. This might even be higher definition than I want to print in. But the cool thing about that is you can always uh, voxelize or mesh and start to tune down that texture a little bit, depending on how you're, how you're fabricating this. So yeah, you can see it's starting to come in here. Yeah, and it's a super realistic texture um, just by combining a few different blocks together. Um, yeah, it starts to feel super customizable with just a few out of the box blocks. So that's the basic principle of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swap out a couple more. So I have the leather. I also have a marble example that I've already configured for this. So you hear the field's pretty interesting looking. Um, but what it looks like applied to this bottle, um, let's just drop it in and find out. Um, it's a little faster. You can see you can see it's been applied in three dimensions, wrapping all the way around this object. Um, and it's pretty realistic, actually. So I'm just going to do Control H just so we can see that a little bit better. Um, and there's actually a lot more detail here than meets the eye originally. So you can see there's like roughness, um, and this noise texture is wrapping all the way around the bottle and has a few different texture scales. So it starts to feel pretty real with just a few noise blocks. Um, and I have one more example with, let's try wood. Let's see what happens. So actually, let's do Control F on the field of view on this. Yeah, so you can see the field view here. It's, it's much more cylindrical. Um, you can see there are like wood grains coming off of it. So let's close. We'll do Control H with this as well. And there we have it. We have wood grain texture applied to our bottle. So we made this super engineered bottle feel super organic texture with just a few blocks. And it's super easy to repeat. So for example, you could apply this to any shape you want. Once you figure out the algorithm for or the, the blocks used for no, applying the texture you want, it's really, really easy to reuse. So I'll apply the marble back again so it's easy to see. Um, and that's it. So yeah, that is how you um, go about applying textures to objects in NTOP by using fields only. And um, the, reason this isn't the reason this is awesome is because it doesn't take any bitmaps, doesn't take any really anything except for fields and a few, a few parameters that I set out for myself here. Um, and I have a highly, highly realistic texture um, just in a few seconds. 
So yeah, All right. well, I hope you found this interesting and looking forward to seeing what you make with more procedural textures. Right, thanks.